I prefer three different horizontally angulated films. In this straight on view, you can see, looking ahead to access, that we're going to be making a window through a gold crown. Notice the pulpal floor and the pulpal roof are almost contiguous. You can see the horns extending up off the floor in the mesial and distal dimensions and some evidence of pulpal stones. Once we have sufficiently isolated the tooth to be treated endodontically, then we're ready to begin to envision our access outline pattern. There's an old expression, start with the end in mind. I like to use the transmetal burr. It will reduce a lot of unwanted vibration. Lay the head of the handpiece over on its side to make the burr more of a side cutting burr rather than an end cutting burr. It's important to create a little window almost immediately so we can use the side of the burr to begin to remove gold and to get access into the underlying dentin. Be sure to have a good finger hold because sometimes these burrs like to skip or skate when you have a metal burr on a metal restorative. But you can begin to then expand the access mesial and you can begin to get prepared to use surgical length instruments. A surgical length number four round burr allows us to brush in a mesial distal direction. The assistant can blow air in through the stropco to evacuate the dust up the high speed suction. We work progressively mesial and distal until we uncover a little bit of the pulpal chamber. Notice I'm showing you the access pattern. It's incomplete, but it's beginning to expand. And of course, it'll be finalized once we find the pulpal floor and the related orifices. You can notice that this is a large stone I'm uncovering, and my burr doesn't actually fall into a pulp chamber. Mapping this stone, you can begin to see it's quite large. It's immobile. It's going to require some resection to free it up. So using a surgical length diamond with 12 millimeters of cutting abrasive, we can begin to flatten out our walls. We are expanding our access walls axially to the mesial. Now that the stone is exposed fully, ultrasound is a very good adjunct to break these things up. Sometimes they'll disintegrate into countless pieces, and other times you'll have the pleasure of removing a fairly significantly sized stone. Notice the occlusal gingival dimensions. Anybody can cut a hole into a tooth, but your great clinicians like to finish those holes superbly. Notice the walls are all nice and flat. This allows us to reflect light off those walls so we can see pulpal floor anatomy better. You can notice that there's more denticles overlying the distal systems, and an explorer is beginning to tease out a small little denticle that could inadvertently get pushed deeper into the canal if we don't take the time to thoughtfully remove these stones. Air evacuation can blow them out once they're free. Well, we just removed a very large stone from the pulp chamber, but recalling in endodontically involved teeth, it is normal for orifices to constrict and recede. And we must be very careful that we remove even stones that lie slightly below the pulpal floor. In this instance, you can see a tin file is bringing up a small denticle so we can make room for the X gates to pre-flare the orifice. By rolling the handpiece in a big orbital arc above the X gates orifice pivot point, we can pre-flare that orifice and we can ramp it out so that it is married to the axial walls and this will give us a smooth entry pattern during subsequent instrumentation. Ultrasonic technology is playing an increasing role in access cavity finalization. Here we're using a Pro Ultra tip, dry. The air blows out the byproduct of our sanding action, which is dentinal dust, and we run along between the MB and ML interconnector. Within this groove in mandibular molars, one can occasionally find a mid-mesial system. If we never explore for this, we'll never find it. Now remember, when you have a mid-mesial, it's right against the depth of the furcal side concavity. So we must shape this canal smaller than we would actually prepare the MB and ML systems. Ultrasound can smooth and refine and do precise amounts of detailed work Reserve your tapered diamonds for doing larger work. There's water port technology if you prefer to cut wet and to float and surf out some of the remnants of our work. 
In the post-operative film, you can observe straight line access, and you can see the mid-mesial is in fact, along its entire length, prepared slightly smaller than the adjacent systems. So in this five system molar, we have a great setup for long-term success. Let's review quickly the steps that produce both coronal and radicular access. First, let's initiate well-angulated preoperative films carefully and thoughtfully. We can evaluate the coronal access with the appropriate cutting burr. We must progressively work our way down towards the pulpal roof. We can't always fall into pulp chambers, so let's be aware of calcifications. Calcifications can be removed either by resection or ultrasound procedures. Establishing radicular access is critical to good clean and shaping disinfection and obturation methods to follow. Great access allows us to visualize and find all the orifices. We can look for straight line access by evaluating our post-operative films to see if our axial walls are smooth and flat. Finishing the access cavity is the sine qua non of excellence.